Hello everyone, how's it going? Today I have another tutorial for Keyshot, for you, of course. And today I'm going to be talking about the curvature node. Now what is this curvature node? As you can see, this coffee maker that I downloaded from the Keyshot library doesn't look as new as it should be. So curvature node is really perfect for making things look used and like rustic and maybe just to show some wear and tear. Uh, so on the edges of this coffee maker, as you can see, the color is different than like the main body. As you can see it here uh, on the plastic pieces too, on the metal pieces, the aluminum pieces, and it's basically everywhere. And also you can see these, uh, these like rugged scratches looking. So it just like makes it look old and used. And I'm going to be teaching you how to use the curvature node today. It's actually quite easy. I'm not going to go over everything that I did for this render. Uh, that's going to take a while. Uh, but I'm just going to show you how to use it and you can just use it in your renders and you can just make everything look more realistic. Okay, so we have a brand new project here in our Keyshot and we're just going to go to models and I'm going to, I already downloaded this coffee maker, I'm just, I'm just going to drag and drop it here. And as you can see, uh, uh, it's aluminum already, the material is aluminum if I'm not mistaken, yep, it is aluminum. And so it just looks very new and we don't want that, of course. So we're just going to double click on it uh, and then we want to go to material graph. And the material graph is pretty simple right now. It's just metal, aluminum. And uh, we want to make some changes to it. So I'm just going to move this here a little bit. And OK. Um, so the first thing you want to do, you want to actually right click in your material graph. You want to go to textures. And you, you want to choose the curvature node. So if you press C on your keyboard, you can see that uh, it shows you the positive curvature and the negative curvature. You can change those colors if you want to, if you prefer it to be like black and white or something else, but I'm, I'm just going to keep it as is. Um, and I'm just going to go over these two radius and cutoff samples. It's just, it just makes it look uh, uh, more realistic. It just makes it look high res. Uh, so cutoff, what is cutoff? Cutoff is basically the fall off that I've talked about in my previous videos. So uh, as you can see, I'm just going to increase it to say five. And it just like increases that blurriness of the the knot. So at, it actually starts blurring from the edges of the effect, and then until it reaches to the to the center. So if we decrease that, we will have a sharper line, and if we increase it, we will have a more blurry, you know, mixed line kind of thing. So we're just gonna keep it at one for for now, if it works. And what radius is? It just makes the lines thicker. So if we increase it to one, you can see that they just look thicker. So we're just going to do like 10 maybe, because five I don't think is enough. And we're going to decrease the cutoff to make the lines look sharper. So instead of one, we're going to do point one. And as you can see, we have like very sharp lines. And it really depends on you. It really depends on what you want. So we're just going to press C to exit out of uh, the scene here. And I'm just going to duplicate this one. Um, and we're gonna choose, or we're gonna use it as a label. Uh, so we're gonna connect it to the label part here, and we're just gonna double click on it, and we want it to um, make it look kind of like used and maybe like darker, like it's kind of dirty on the edges, something like that. So we're gonna have to increase the roughness maybe to one. And we're gonna have to, of course, use the curvature knot as our opacity. So I'm just gonna change the color first. Um, and I'm going to change it to something blackish, maybe. And I'm going to connect this to my opacity. Now see what happens. So as you can see, we have the, uh, the zero curvature that is white. is showing as black, which we want it to be inverted. So we're just going to right click on this connection. And we go to utilities and we use a color invert. Now as you can see, we have, um, we have the, like the, the blackish metal on the edges only and that is what we want. Okay, so the next thing we want to do, we want to just uh, play with the colors because I don't really like this color. I actually based that one render that you saw off of this one kinda. Uh, so as you can see, it's like uh, these parts are actually rustic looking and old looking, but the edges look new, you know. Uh, so we're just gonna have to choose, uh, double click on that and then we go to measure and we choose aluminum again. And we can actually decrease the roughness because that's where the touch points are. So people are touching those points, so it just makes it less rougher. So I'm just going to do uh, 
0.01. And this one, we're going to change that color there. So we're just going to do color, and it's, we don't want blue, of course. Uh, we want something maybe like this. Okay, so that can be our background. Uh, so the next thing you want to do is to add... Um, I found out that if you use a letter or if you use a cellular or if you use a mesh, it doesn't really matter, or spots, it just like gives you the same results really and you want to make it look as 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 close to this one as as you can. So we're just going to press <clears throat> C again and as you can see you don't really want those spots, you want them to be bigger, way bigger, so we're just going to increase the radius to let's see, one, I guess, no that's still too little. And we're gonna increase the fall off. We don't want uh, we don't want sh sharp spots like that. So we're just gonna do like 0.5 maybe. Um, I think 0.5 is good. And we're gonna make it look a little uh, distorted and a little random. So I think that's good. And levels is just gonna increase the number of the spots. I think we're just gonna keep it at one. And we could change the cell type. Uh, so let's see which one looks real more realistic. I think circle looks more realistic. And I'm going to increase the uh, the scale, actually. So I'm just going to do 10, maybe, or let's do 50. Nope, that's too much. Let's do 30. I think that's that should be good. And I'm going to increase the fall off again to 0.75. And I'm going to move it a little bit. Yeah, I believe that should be good. I'm just going to change this to part. And <clears throat> we're going to press... <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, C to exit out of the preview, and we're gonna <clears throat> boy, we're gonna duplicate this again, and we're gonna connect it to our second label, and so now we have a brand new coffee maker. Oh, uh, well, we don't want that. So we're just gonna have to connect these spots to opacity. So when we connect it to opacity, that's what we have, and we're going to uh, invert. We're gonna have to invert this, I believe. Yep. And I'm going to change the color to something more rustic looking, maybe. Oh, that's too, too much. Uh, let's see. Maybe that's... No, that's too much. Mm, actually, we can pick the color from our reference picture, so it's easier. So we're just going to... Choose the color picker and maybe choose somewhere here. We want a coffee looking color. And this is just uh, way too off. We do not want that. So I'm just going <clears> to <throat> maybe increase the fall off to one, perhaps. I think one is good, but the color is still just too bright. So we're just going to have to decrease the, or bring it here a little bit. Okay, now it just looks kind of burnt. Um, again, it's really up to you. You can <clears throat> you can use uh, cellular, or you can do uh, granite, leather, marble, or you can do it noise. Actually, noise I think is the best option that we have right now because uh, this one doesn't look as realis realistic. So we're just gonna press C on noise, and we're just gonna increase the scale to say third, no, fifty, perhaps seventy. Yeah, maybe a little more, eighty. Yeah, maybe that's good. And we're just going to connect this to color invert. I do not know if we need the color invert. Um, I believe we do. Let's see. Yeah, it doesn't matter. It really doesn't matter. So we're just going to uh, delete the color invert, and we have this. It's it's starting to, uh, to, to you know to just look old and rusty. Uh, so we can just play with the color a little bit, and I'm going to um, increase the roughness to 0 0.5, maybe 0 0.75. So we don't we don't want it to be super rough. And I'm gonna make I'm gonna add some more brown to this. It's starting to get uh, to 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 look good. Uh, so the next thing we want to do is to look at our reference photo, which is this one. And as you can see, it's like it's burnt on the bottom. Uh, so for that, you, if you've seen my previous videos, <clears throat> you know that we can use a color gradient node. So we need to go to textures and color gradients. Now, if you if you press C on it, we can see that this is our color gradient right now. Uh, we don't want it to be like that, so we're just going to have to rotate it. 
Uh, um, just maybe something, you know, random looking maybe. And I'm gonna decrease the scale a little bit. Maybe it's too much. Yeah, maybe this one's good, I believe. And yeah, the rest of it looks good. We're just gonna press C again. And we want to duplicate one of these, or we want to just do another material, so I'm just going to duplicate it, and I'm going to connect this to label 3. And I'm going to connect the color gradient to opacity. <clears throat> so as you can see, it is showing there, and it's not showing there, so we, we want it to be inverted. Again, we click on the connection, we right-click on the connection, we go to color invert. And as you can see, it's like it's kind of like dark brownish and to, to something more aluminum-like. Uh, material and I'm gonna change the roughness to one. We want it to be super rough. Uh, I believe we are almost done and I'm gonna connect this to bump just to make it look more realistic and I'm gonna do another noise texture. Uh, just like FYI, if you want your stuff to make look or if you want to make your stuff look more realistic, just always do like a a, a small skinny like noise texture to the surface of your model. So like 10 millimeter, that's too much. So we're just gonna do like five maybe, or even less. Let's do two, and then I'm gonna connect that to my main uh, material, the background material, and I'm gonna double click on it. Bump height. I know it's too much. Uh, you can't play with that, but I know it's too much. So we're just gonna do 0 0.01, and I think that's it. And now you can repeat this process for the plastic part, or you can repeat this process for like the screws here or the this thing, I don't know what that is. Uh, you can just like, you know, play with this process on your model. Uh, it can be literally anything that has any kind of curvature. And uh, I use the, the color gradient, not just as like a bonus part to this tutorial. I wasn't gonna use it. Um, but as you can see, we could look, we could make things look more realistic and it just looks better. So one thing you could do, if you don't wanna like, repeat the whole process, you could actually just like, you know, uh, click all of these and just copy them and go to like your plastic, whatever, and you want to paste them here, right? And you just want to organize them, and this is our material, so we're just going to connect them to its label. And we will have to change uh, the metal material to plastic, perhaps. Maybe we can like change the color a little bit, just to make them look uh, more realistic because they were plastic uh, to begin with. So if you zoom in, you can see how the edges look very different than the rest of it. Now this is just too much, so again you want to go to your curvature node and then like play with the cutoff. You can play with the radius. You can increase the samples to just make it look more realistic. So for now, I'm just gonna do. 0.5 and I'm going to decrease the radius to maybe 5 pixels and also I think <clears throat> the color is just too bright I'm just going to go darker maybe and that's it it's it's very simple <clears throat> Kisha just gives you the opportunity to make photorealistic renderings and that's it guys if you like this video please consider subscribing and liking this video and sharing it with your friends maybe. <clears throat> that would appreciate it. That would help me greatly and I would appreciate it greatly as well. If you have any, if you have any questions, please uh, leave them down in the comments. I will answer to all of your questions. And that's it. Have a good day.